Hello. Well, today I'm gonna do something a bit different than I have done before for this series. Um, I'm going to um, uh, list off some uh, memorable films uh, that I've seen on the big screen. Um, you know, movie going, ex uh, theater going experiences. Uh, uh, better to say, because um, a week ago, a uh, YouTuber um, who I enjoy uh, a lot, uh, named Dasky Bepu, um, <clears throat> he, I hope I pronounced that right, I believe I did, but you know, I've been watching a lot of his videos, and um, I'll actually give uh, links in the description of the video. Um, <clears throat> two is two videos because it's a two part video and he talks about the films he's seen on the big screen and um, it really got me to thinking and I commented there and I talked about some on those two videos talked about some of the films I had seen both old films that they're re-releasing for one reason or another or um new films at the time. At the time of their release, they were brand new. So, I, um, I thought, you know, I'd like to do a video of that. Um, this will be one part, so apologies in advance for the length. Um, but hopefully you will, um, <clears throat> understand. Um, I'll do my best to be short and sweet with how I of my enjoyment and just talking about the, that experience, those experiences. Um, and I'll also do my best to articulate them. I have a list here um, I wrote down. That way uh, I would know what to properly say as opposed to just trying to go from memory on all these movies. There's various films that I've had incredible experiences, but I just wanted to narrow them down here. So. First one is uh, Ben Hur. Um, I had originally seen this film on TCM. You know they play a lot of great films <clears throat> on that channel, and um, I believe it was during like, the Oscars. Like, like they like every February, and going into March, they always have like 31 days of Oscar, like leading up to the Academy Awards, and. Um, they go essentially from order, pretty much, from like the late 20s, early 30s, all the way up into more current era. So, you know, this was one of those films, and um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a great film when I saw it. You know, Charlton Heston's always uh, great to watch. He's an incredible actor. Um, he won an Academy Award, I think very deservingly so. Um, though there were some other people who were nominated or could have been nominated that weren't, or that didn't win. But, you know, uh, Charlton has to get a fantastic performance. And then being able to see it on the big screen. Um, and I should also say, um, here in the United States we have a uh, Cinemark, where what they do for like every month, it used to be multiple films throughout the month, but what they do is they have certain, like, like I guess, events. Like, they used to be part of, like, the classic series where films like Ben-Hur and many of these others were shown on the big screen. And I went and saw it, and I also saw it with my mother because she hadn't seen it. I had seen it once before, and I thought it would be a great time to see it once again on but on the big screen, and I loved it even more. She loved it, and um, yeah, it was it was just a fun, fun time. It is over three hours, so there's had to take that in consideration. But it was it was it was a fun time. Um, yeah, a great epic film.
another film is also with Charles Neston, The Ten Commandments. Um, it's just a great spectacle, a great film, uh, you know, a retelling of, of, you know, Moses and the Bible and, you know, you know that story. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, people who uh, are watching this know that story uh, at least pretty well. And I feel people have probably seen this film at least once in their life, and um, it like is like Ben Hur is very lengthy. It is over three hours long, also. So if you haven't seen either of those two films, I recommend it, but they are long. So uh, you know, take that in consideration, um, as well as to when you'd watch it, watch these films, and um, also if you have to take breaks, do it accordingly. They are, there are intermissions, but, you know, <clears throat> just want to give you uh, all a, just a warning. Uh, if you're not completely familiar with either of these films, like with the Ten Commandments, you know, I think many people know what that story is, even if they haven't seen the film. You know, they, they, they know the, the central story of how all of that came to be. But it is quite a amazing film to watch, you know. And uh, Charlton Charlton Heston's performance as Moses is just incredible. Um, he was a great actor, um, and yeah, that was a great experience. You know, uh, a lot of people were in there. Uh, many oh, there's a lot of people in these theaters too when they go and see this. The, these films, um, though not as much as when um, saw I saw Ben Hur. I mean, there were a good number of people, but in comparison, there were a lot more people to see the Ten Commandments, um, and that was a just an experience to have. That um, I was I was glad I got to partake, and it was just. So, uh, you know, words don't really are able to be, you can't really describe uh, experiences sometimes like that. Like watching the Ten Commandments or Ben-Hur. It's just like you, you really just, you have to experience certain films on the big screen. And these two, I believe, are really essential. Some of these you might think not so much, but I really think for a good number of these you really need to see these on the big screen to truly appreciate the movies. Casablanca I also saw, also part of that uh, classic series. Um, that was fantastic to see. Uh, it's a great film, classic film. Uh, Humphrey Bogart is incredible, Ingrid Bergman cast and everybody is just it's very deserving of the best picture Oscar and director screenplay um, but uh, Bogart should have won the Oscar for best actor fortunately he didn't but uh, that happens and um, seeing a cinematic masterpiece like Casablanca that you hear so many great things about uh, before you see the film and then during and after you see it, you know, nothing really it compares to seeing it on the big screen. And I was just happy to have been, uh, been able to see it. I really have been able to see all these films. Um, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington is one I saw this past year. That was incredible also. Um, I also saw months prior... The Philadelphia story with James Stewart, and in that they uh, talked a bit about this because um, for this film, uh, James Stewart didn't get the Academy Award for Best Actor. He won the following year for uh, the Philadelphia story, and he always maintained he won that because of Mr. Smith, and they kind of retroactively saw the mistake of not giving it to him that year. 
So that was a makeup. They gave it the Oscar he should have gotten the previous year, that year. Um, but just seeing a film like that on the big screen is just fantastic. Not the hugest uh, fan of political films, but uh, I would say that's an essential film, honestly. Um, It was just such an essential film to watch. <clears throat> it's, it's really a very American film. Um, but maybe you could see it as also a, a, a film that could be seen maybe more worldly? Eh, I don't know. Because it's very American. It's very patriotic to uh, the United States. Maybe it's not very worldly, but um, I guess in that, uh, in the way of uh, showing corruption and uh, in political office and uh, or like things in the Senate are corrupt, could be sort of a universal thing. How many governments are corrupt? Uh, it showed that very well. Uh, during those times, like during the 1930s, came out in 1939, which was said to be the heyday of the, uh, you know, the, the uh, golden year, the best year for Hollywood, one of the greatest years ever. And um, cause that year they also had Gone with the Wind, another classic film, um, The Wizard of Oz, uh, Goodbye Mr. Chips. And that actor in that film, Robert Donat, won Best Actor instead of James Stewart. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, uh, yeah, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Seeing that on the big screen also really, really helps. Uh, you really, to, if you've ever seen it before and you see it on the big screen, really helps you just love it even more. I know I'm saying that a lot, but I, I want to really drive home the point that some films you watch on TV, um, be it they're on a network and you watch it, or you own like the DVD or the Blu-ray, or it's on a streaming service. Many of these films would be on streaming services, I'm sure. But to truly appreciate uh, many of these films, you really need to watch them on the in a theater, if they're ever released in your area. Um, though, I believe Cinemark and their series, they do. I believe they are really um, an American uh, theater chain. I don't believe they are anywhere else in the world. Uh, at most, they might be North America. Maybe like, Canada might have uh, some Cinemark theaters. Maybe Mexico, but those are big navies, so you know, don't quote me on all that. Um, and another great theater experience I had was the Shawshank Redemption. Now I was trying to recall if I had seen this on the big screen, um, but uh, I did find my ticket stub because uh, I keep ticket stubs because I don't know. I just like to collect them. Like when I'm able to go see a film in the theater. It's just it's just kind of cool to keep and not and I don't like to throw it away of course now I put it back uh, I just thought of it but because of trying to recall if I had seen it on the big screen but I did and it was a that was a great film I, I just love it um, it's very positive and in a lot of ways and uplifting of not giving up and you know because Andy Dufresne was in prison for a crime he never committed. He didn't kill his wife and her lover. Um, even though certain evidence uh, points to him doing it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's very... Uh, it's a very incredible film uh, at the time of its release in 1994. Um, you know, critically praised, but didn't do well financially, but over time is regarded as a classic. 
got nominated for numerous Academy Awards. Didn't win any of them, though. And um, is on so many top ten lists, or just top film lists in general. Not just top ten, top hundred. Um, and it is definitely worth worthy of uh, being on a top uh, 20 list, top 10 list. Um, and just seeing that incredible movie that I actually saw when I was really young. I saw it just before uh, The Green Mile. Uh, I saw those two films because they're like on TV because like the cause they're both written and directed by Frank Darabont and they're both Stephen King based off Stephen King uh, books, uh, or this is a novella, and um, based from a novella, but it was just incredible to see on the big screen. It was so amazing. Um, it was very sad when, you know, spoiler for anybody who hasn't seen the film, when, you know, Brooks died, and you can feel that in the theater. You could feel the sadness when that happens how this very kind old man who pretty much was in life in prison but then got parole got parole granted to him and then he just couldn't live it on the outside and kills himself and it's that was so sad uh, it's just It was quite a moment, really, uh, to behold, seeing that on the big screen and, and that particular scene, it's just so, it was just more impactful, uh, if that makes sense, than seeing it at home on TV screen. It was just more impactful, and it was just incredibly sad. Another great film I saw was uh, Gladiator. Russell Crowe, the Ridley Scott film, and that was a spectacle to watch. That was f fun and great, and just a, it was just really enticing, really. Uh, it was such a very good story of a man seeking revenge for the death of his family, and it's just so things were set up against him to fail and yet he uh, didn't he succeeds in this journey and excuse me and he you know Maximus was it was his hero you know it's uh, just a great character and another film I saw on the big screen was Spartacus, which I didn't put in here, but it's on my gladiator. Uh, Spartacus was also an incredible film. Uh, Stanley Kubrick, he, uh, he didn't like that movie due to the conflicts he had with uh, Kirk Douglas as well as um, Eddie. Uh, no real control due to the fact that he. Uh, this was a film uh, that Kirk Douglas wanted made, and uh, you know, the story of Spartacus. You know, it's you know, it's very inspiring to a lot of people. You know, watching the film, you know, I can see it because you know, going against the <laughs> you know the Rome of Empire and watching everything unfold on. In a huge in a big theater it's just really um, it's truly a, a remarkable thing to see um, another is a film I saw was scream it's a closer theater not the same it wasn't at the cinema market it's a more of a local theater uh, they show a lot of art films but every so often they'll show other films and uh, they showed Scream and that was just fun it was such a fun time people were laughing because 
there it's actually a pretty funny film. I know many people say it's a cheesy film, which I guess you could make the argument for, but if you really think about it, it's it's really funny. Like the dialogue and everything is is like the, how Matthew Lillard's character is and uh, Jamie Kennedy's character and just how their characters are written and then portrayed and just directed. It was a, such a fun film. It really makes you... If you ever have the chance to see Scream on the big screen, uh, and yes, it is a horror film, uh, but also, again, if you've never seen it, pokes fun at horror and all the cliches horror movies have, while all itself is a horror movie, it's just a fun film to watch. And, um, yeah. I'd recommend watching it. Um, another film, or, oh, this was a double feature. Uh, one of the really rare double features I've ever seen in my life, which is a 2001 A Space Odyssey and A Clockwork Orange. <clears throat> Two other uh, Stanley Kubrick films. And, um, you know, they played them back to back. And, um, yeah. You know, Clockwork Orange is like the, one of the most controversial films made due to the subject matter it has. And um, watching it on the big screen, I can definitely truly understand even more why. So, because of, of the main character and what he does, it's just so, you know has a different impact than seeing all that on the, a smaller screen. And 2001 A Space Odyssey was quite an experience. It was such a, it's, it is, that's one of those films that's truly theatrical and you need to see on the big screen. You just need to. If you like the film. If you don't like the movie, then, you know, it, it's not for you. You're not going to want to watch it. But it is an incredible experience. I will say, uh, yeah. Um, and another film is uh, *The Silence of the Lambs*, and th this is a film that I've seen a couple of times on the big screen. Um, once at the uh, Cinemark uh, theater, and once at the local theater I talked about not too long ago. And um, yeah, the uh, that was just. It was just being able to see this film more than once is just fun. And uh, I would love to see it as many times on the big screen as I can. Um, I'm not going to say I will, but, you know, uh, being able to have seen The Silence of the Lambs was incredible. You know, it's very disturbing because uh, of Hannibal Lecter, but then seeing him in his eyes. His bold blue eyes piercing into your soul on a huge screen like that is just so. It's very unnerving. And um, obviously, you know, uh, Buffalo Bill and everything going on there. Uh, uh, quite an experience, you know. Words can't describe the experience, honestly. And another film is uh, Good Will Hunting. Um, saw this, not uh, they played it not long after Robin Williams died. It was because that was his Academy Award winning performance. It's also the film that got uh, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck Academy Awards for their writing. Um, Damon also was nominated for Best Actor. He didn't win, but, you know, uh, two very deserving awards. Um, wished it won more, but, you know... What can you do? Um, but yeah, Goodwill Hunting is a film that's it's just a, it's a very good film. It's very well written and acted. It's you know troubled man trying to you know just you know he's had a rough life and uh, it, you sort of get a sense he does. 
lot of ways, like, he doesn't want his life to really change. Like, he doesn't want to do anything really to leave his comfort zone, yet at the same time, uh, seeing it on the big screen and subsequent viewings, it seems like in a way he kind of sort of maybe does want to, but he just doesn't have that push. Like, you know, a big push, obviously, his girlfriend that she breaks up with, and she goes to California. And then also his best friend, you know, Ben Affleck, says to him, and then everything, and then, like, you know, with uh, Robin Williams playing his therapist and all this stuff going on, it brings out a lot of stuff in him that uh, maybe he himself doesn't really want to face or admit. Um, perhaps that's just me. Maybe my interpretation could, you know, um, change, obviously. You know, when you watch movies a whole lot, uh, your your in interpretation could change here and there. You might still love a film, but maybe the way you see it is a bit differently. Um, at least that was how I've seen a few times since. It's not a film I watch all the time, uh, but yeah, I wonder how it would change if I just popped it in again and just watched it. It could be different. Uh, it could be the same. I don't know, um, but you know, it's a great film regardless. And um, seeing Robin Williams on the big screen again after his passing, um, that was uh, that was great. And another film uh, is uh, Doctor Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb which I also saw twice on the big screen. And that is my favorite comedy of all time. I believe I've said so before um, on here a couple of times on this channel, this series also I do. I just love it. You know, It's Stanley Kubrick's best film in my opinion. I know many cite 2001, some Clockwork Orange, but for me it's really, it's, it's Dr. Strangelove. It's just... You could never really peg Kubrick for any one kind of genre. But he really didn't do much comedy. And uh, this is really the only true full-blown comedy he ever did. And it's incredible. Um, the performances performed by Peter Sellers was, was just top-notch. George C. Scott, Sterling Hayden, um, Slim Pickens, and also, uh, you know, uh, James Earl Jones' first film role ever, you know, um, just everybody in this film did an incredible job, and being able to see that on the big screen twice was amazing to watch. I loved it uh, before I saw that on the big screen, and I still love it even more. And um, that famous sequence of Major Kong writing the bomb down uh, on the target for just before it blows up is so iconic and truly worth seeing on the big screen. So yeah, Doctor Strangelove, another great film I saw. Um, here's one. Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. They released re-released uh, Reservoir Dogs on the big screen for its 20th anniversary, um, which I saw. And that was quite incredible. There's a decent crowd of people came in, though I saw it earlier, so there wouldn't be a huge amount of people, and also so that I would be, be, be able to, you know, uh, not have to fight to try and get in uh, to see it. Um, 
because it was only two times in one. It was one day showing and two times only. I, like two times, you can see it, there's two showings. Um, and that was really cool. Uh, it had pan picked trailers from films Tarantino himself loves. Um, like Taxi Driver was one. Um, remember that? And it's just, it was so. Cool. They had they had like uh, interviews with people, like the producer of Reservoir Dogs and some other people who knew Quentin Tarantino, and others who have worked with him either from Reservoir Dogs onwards or just later on, and just their experiences from watching Reservoir Dogs and then meeting him. It was just it was an incredible experience, and the movie itself. Uh, I I love that film. Uh, it's my favorite Tarantino film. Then I saw Pulp Fiction, and saw uh, that film with my brother and, uh, and sister-in-law, and uh, that was great. Uh, my brother loves Pulp Fiction a lot, um, and that was just a fun. It was like a fun bonding kind of experience between, me. I guess, he and I. Uh, my family we love movies anyway, but just seeing a movie. Uh, he really loved and I also quite enjoy it was it was nice um, and the other film that I saw that was old my last one I wrote here is an older film is uh, is Jaws uh, I've seen that a couple of times on the big screen also first time was with my other brother uh, who also loves Jaws and that was great to see the second time was for the 40th anniversary, where they had Ben Mankiewicz of TCM give an introduction and an outro to bookend the film, and gave quotes, and or not quotes, just gave trivia, talked about the film, and you know, obviously people know how you know how uh, film production problems that movie had, and just seeing Jaws on the big screen is. Is incredible. Josh is my second favorite movie of all time, and seeing one of my favorites that high up is on my favorites list is just that was an incredible uh, experience that I will never forget. Uh, both times. Um, hope to see it a third, um, but uh, yeah. That is if they do uh, release it again. So I've talked about that, and um, it seems as if it, for uh, like uh, for uh, Cinemark, they've kind of quit their classic series, at least for now. Maybe they'll uh, do that again at some point. But there's Fathom Events, which is which they would uh, also promote, and where like once a month there's this film uh, from TCM, a classic film. And, and there's even other films also they'll play, just aren't as advertised like TCM is, because TCM has a big name. Um, so if you go to Fathom Events and you have a Cinemark uh, theater near you, just look and see if there's any old movies you like or are interested in seeing, and if they're pl gonna play at some point, and then. If you're able to, uh, I go. I say go see, see them. Uh, again, films like all that I've listed, in my opinion, uh, all those films are truly worth seeing. Um, also, I, I will also remember um, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I believe that was the very first, or at least one of the first films I watched on the big screen through like that through Cinemark. Uh, and they had like a pop-up thing where they have trivia or stuff said before and during the film. It's, it, that was fun, and that was a fun film. I loved that movie. That's one of my favorite comedies also. Um, yeah. I enjoy, I enjoy Monty Python. I know some don't, and um, <clears throat> understandably so. I can understand why. Uh, the type of humor uh, is pretty hit or miss for some, but I enjoy it. Well, 
I enjoy their humor. I enjoy their shows and the films. So on to the new films, or at least new when they uh, came out. And um, the first is Dunkirk. You know, I've talked about that a lot. And um, I didn't get to see it on in IMAX, uh, which from everything I've seen, I've heard uh, from people, that's the best way to see it. Though some said, if you don't see it in IMAX, don't even bother seeing it. Like I thought that was actually kind of a stupid statement some made. Uh, because if you're able to see it on the big screen when it was out, it was just definitely worth watching in, in general, honestly. Also, uh, in Des Moines, uh, where I live, we don't have a very good IMAX. Um, it's at the Science Center, and I've always equated that IMAX theater to... It's, it's good if you wanted to have your own home movie theater, but wanted it an IMAX, an IMAX version of a home movie theater. That's the equivalent of uh, the IMAX theater we have in Des Moines. That's in my opinion, because I remember seeing an IMAX theater when I was really young down in Florida, and that was huge. Uh, but ours, you know... I did see a film there that I'm also going to mention, so I won't mention that yet, but yeah, I would have loved to have seen Dunkirk on the big screen, on the big IMAX screen, but regardless, I just I just love that film, still do, it was quite a ride, it was very suspenseful, um, suspenseful, is that the right word for it? Um, Nolan himself even described it as a suspense film. Um, yeah, it's also very loud with all the gunshots and bombs and explosions and everything going on. It was a very uh, incredible experience. Uh, uh, one that, for a movie-going experience, I will truly recall for years to come. Uh, in terms of uh, modern films or films that were new when they came out not just old films that are out for anniversaries but um, if I ever have the chance to see Dunkirk in IMAX in the future and um, like a, a good IMAX uh, I will definitely go I will want that experience the, the theatrical experience I had was incredible I would just like to have it again. Because I saw that multiple times also. Um, another experience was uh, the Dark Knight trilogy. Um, now I saw each of those films in theaters when they came out. Like Batman Begins in 2005, Dark Knight 2008, and The Dark Knight Rises in 2012. But in 2012... They had a marathon for uh, all three films, like starting at 6 p.m. And there would be intermissions between, and obviously in the culmination of The Dark Knight Rises, and that was an experience to have. Friends of mine went and saw it, and that, that was just incredible. Uh, the whole place was really excited, you know, and coming out, I, I think that it helped me appreciate and love uh, The Dark Knight Rises as much as I do. Um, I know it's not one of the most popular films of the trilogy, um, but to me, I just I just love it. Uh, I always have. Um, always will. Um, but yeah, I think seeing all three films back to back on the big screen, uh, which I think is how it's supposed to be. I think you should see those films on the big screen if you had the opportunity to. Obviously, if you didn't, um, be like you were, maybe you were a bit too young or you weren't alive yet by the time you see this video. Maybe you were around in 2012 or maybe you were just born. But, no. Uh, 
yeah, that was a, such an experience. It was incredible. Um, yeah, I loved it. Um, I also saw that film, The Dark Knight Rises, in IMAX. Um, well, that was the last movie I saw in IMAX, and it's a great film again, but you know, the IMAX that we had was like you're real cramped, and you kind of, if you're not at the top, you're gonna have to crane your neck like that to see the screen if you're at the bottom, and it's just another reason why I say it's not a it's like a home theater version of a, what an IMAX theater should be. Okay, a couple more. Um, I think this one should be pretty obvious. Um, the Star Wars prequels. Um, again, I know many people don't love those films compared to the original trilogy, but I always have. I always will. That was the theatrical Star Wars experience I had growing up. Um, saw the original trilogy on uh, VHS, <clears throat> and I, I have always loved them. For a while, I was like, you know, for like the Phantom Menace, I didn't love it as much as I did as a kid, because you know, when you're a kid, you just, I just love that film. I went through a phase where I didn't love it as much, but. Rewatching it again, and then looking back at the theatrical experience, I I really appreciate it. Um, I appreciate it a lot more than I had for a time. Um, I love Attack of the Clones. I know that gets a lot of crap for the dialogue, but <clears throat> all the dialogue was not the best. It was all melodramatic. It was space opera. There's supposed to be melodrama in there. Um, I think that's one thing that makes Star Wars unique. I've said that before, but I'll say it again. I'm sure many of you are tired of hearing that, but it's true. Um, but, uh, yeah, and The Revenge of the Sith, you know, that was, those, yeah, that was an incredible film to see. Uh, I saw each of those films multiple times on the big screen. Uh... And I remember seeing Revenge of the Sith and being a bit sad because that was... Star Wars was my franchise growing up. I love that film. And to see it end... Well, I'm like, I don't know, at least I got to be alive and to see it on the big screen end. But then, of course, you now there's new films. So it did end for a while, for like 10 years or so, and then... More films came out, so it's a bit sad for a while after that. Um, I did also see Star Wars Episode One in 3D, and yeah, the 3D might not have been incredible, exactly like groundbreaking or anything, but like, yeah, it, it was. I I just didn't care. I was. I just loved. Watching Star Wars again, I loved watching the Phantom Menace again. It really brought me back to my back when I was a kid. I was a little kid watching it for the first time on the big screen, and I just it's just incredible. I was looking forward to seeing all six on the big screen. You know, being able to. <clears throat> we lived my childhood for three years with the prequel trilogy, reliving the theatrical experience, and then going to see. <coughs> excuse me. The original trilogy afterwards, and um, but when Disney bought Lucasfilm and got Star Wars been put on indefinite hold and um you know as a new film are in 3d also um why not hold off on the release of all those films and uh, write all the scripts film them because in 2017 which would be last year for the 40th anniversary of the original film that's when return of the jedi was going to come out and 
there you could have um in 2018 this year you could have had episode 7 next year episode 8 and then episode 9 2020 and nine years in a row of these Star Wars films sort of like what they're doing now every year do a Star Wars movie so could have done that could have worked on incredible scripts and just got amazing stuff done and to tie it all in and I'm sure later on there'll be 10, 11, and 12 and all that, but that'd be down the line. So that would be typically where it would end, but uh, there's one more film I want to talk about, and that is um, this film. Manchester by the Sea. Now, I've talked about this before. I enjoy this film. I love it. Um... But when I saw it, it was such an experience. I feel like I saw it at the right place, or at the right time, I should say. My great-grandmother passed away um, the previous November 2016. I saw it New Year's Day 2017, so last year. So, it hadn't even been two months since she passed away. And seeing how this film is about the loss of a family member, and there's other things that happen that, if I say more about the unfortunate sadness of the film that happens, I really can't say because it's very hard even though it would be spoiling it's just it's just a hard thing to talk about if you've seen it you know what I'm talking about you know the moment they hold but they put that in the middle of the film or at least near the middle of the film uh, if it isn't in the middle but. but I don't know I was also the very I was the youngest person there went by myself, didn't go with any friends, any family members, and um, I don't know. And I mentioned before how later in that March my grandmother passed away. Actually, exactly two months later. But it was between that time where, between both of my grandma's deaths, one was still alive and the other passed away. And, um, I just feel like it happened at the, the right time. Again, I know I've said that before, but it just it seemed like it was at the right time because it really affected me, but it didn't really make me super depressed and sad. I just... I don't know. It was just the atmosphere in the theater... I guess possibly what had happened in my life. Just something there that just really maybe I felt a connection somehow. I've, I've never felt before with any of these films, even though I love Star Wars. I never felt that kind of connection, though. This was a very special moment I will never replicate. Um, perhaps it was part of a therapeutic thing things somewhat kind of for um you know my um great grandmother's passing I don't know I can't really explain it <clears throat> but um yeah it's just an experience I will never forget it's a movie experience that that can never be replicated, no matter what. Just at the right time, right place, right time, I guess. Things sort of aligned. I was sad. She was still, all of us were still railing from that. Uh, she was 99, she would have been 100 her next birthday, uh, that April. So, seeing how she just missed she missed her 
hundredth birthday, which was fairly uh, close ahead. Uh, and then seeing this film, I think that just uh, just really did something. Uh, again, I can't explain it, but maybe you know what I mean by that. Maybe you've had an experience like that. Maybe not, um, but I can't explain it. Anyway, uh, enough of that. Uh, sadness, I guess you could say. Um, but these were all great films. These were all great experiences. I know this was long. I apologize for that. I apologized in the beginning, but I want to apologize again. But if you stuck through, you watched it all the way through, thank you. Uh, if you didn't, if you watched part of it and you stopped, understandable. But regardless, thank you uh, for this. Just wanted to do something different. And, uh, yeah. I hope uh, you all have a good day. You have a good weekend. Uh, watch the good, good films. And, uh... You know, Christmas is coming. Maybe you'll watch some Christmas movies this weekend. Um, but regardless, uh, again, uh, hope everything is good in your life. And, uh, yeah. Hope you all have a good, uh, good day and weekend, even though I've said that again. Uh, I was just repeating myself. Apologize, but, uh, yeah. Until next time, keep living life and have fun.